And uh, I don't know, I, it's kind of fond memories of the way it seems like that Charles and I was the one that had the responsibility of cleaning out that church before a church service. Did you ever have to do that? wonder why. You spent your time up at Eddie's pool hall shooting pool, drinking beer, and Charles and I was over sw sweeping out the church for a church service, and I can't figure this out. Well, I've always been a pretty good manager. <laughs> But I remember the red wasp and mainly, I guess, the dirt daubers flying around in there. And uh, those were red wasps during the church service. And uh, everybody with their fans in the middle of summer and the diving uh, red wasp in there. But uh, it didn't seem to deter the, uh, the worship service at all. You didn't go to school there, did you? I never did. However, I did get into the school. Uh, I don't know whether I have memories, but uh, people telling me that I'd get in trouble at home and I'd run in and Mom said I would always run in and sit next to Brother James in the schoolroom. And there is an article in one of those school papers that Mr. Stark wrote that referred to one of those instances. When I started the school there, I had just turned five and Uncle Clem Newhouse had given me a great mini black and tan Airedale dog. And that dog went to school with me. And that school teacher had to get that dog's permission in order to ask me even a question. Well, uh, I think. You had quite a bit of courage taking that dog with you because as I recall, Uncle Clem was very impressed with what that dog learned. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they just started talking about obedient schools in just the last few years. <laughs> and that dog was going to, to school. That was the fall of 1926 when I started this school. Five years old. And I was five years old. See, that was one year younger than anybody else. Well, the reason why, there were nobody but pranks in that school, and this teacher, who was a vicar, needed someone in the first grade to fill out his schedule. And he turned around and looked at me, and he, 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 had, he said, Mrs. Prang, there, he's bright enough looking to be in the first grade. And Mom said, please take him because I've got three other youngins younger than he is that I've got to take care of and that's why I got to school early. And then he, I made, I still have that report card and it's straight E's, E's for excellent. Yet he held me over and I had to take the first grade over. And I didn't know what was happening to me until my fourth or fifth grade and I started counting up school teachers I had and I realized that here I was in the fourth grade and I'd had five school teachers. And I went to my who went to mom and I asked her what happened and she says, well, Mr. Stock just thought you were too young to pass to the second grade. You started the school at five, one year earlier, I guess, than what's normal. And I'm not sure, is it correct that you were about 20 when you got out of high school? And if that's true, <laughs> how did this occur? <laughs> well, I appreciate your humor. But you know what? My first grade teacher that I went to school to in 1926, I saw his name and he's still alive. And he lives right out of Minneapolis. Herman Seeding. Still alive. Yeah. If we go up in that country, I'm going to go by and see him. That name is familiar. Well, folks, I'll tell you, uh, this is going to be continued until uh, we'll take up again tomorrow. I think this gives some insight on uh, what happened, some of the happenings in our childhood, which will make it more interesting on what we're to look forward to tomorrow, and hopefully we'll get uh, some good pictures and comments on uh, the video. There was I sure time. appreciate it. You enjoyed talking with you. <laughs>
She's a rice farmer, school bus driver, and, uh, and David and I, we grew up with Ludie until we moved to California. And Edna Lou, uh, get us caught up a little bit. You have one daughter, right? And her name is... Uh, Deborah K. Harlan. Deborah K. Yeah. And uh, you have at least one, one granddaughter. Kid. What's her name? Tracy. Tracy Lynn Good. Uh oh Tracy. I shouldn't have said that. Tracy Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Tracy Lynn. And she's uh, in high school. No. No? She's what? in seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now I've mentioned that you were a rice farmer. But now I understand that you're uh, renting now, that you yeah. have the farm, but you rent it. So you're not bothered with uh, no. worrying about actually doing the work and all that business. Just fish. Yeah. And love. Nice. Is that right? <laughs> That's great. Well, listen, uh, of course, we remember our, our Aunt Martili and Uncle Eula, which uh, raised you, right? Uncle Cal. Or, yeah, Uncle Cal and Aunt Martili. Yeah. Now, uh, what year did they uh, pass away? In 1661. 1661? And Uncle Eula and Aunt Molly? I don't really remember how. I, about 10 years later, but I really don't remember, you know. Well, was it that long? Exactly, yeah. 10 years, is that right? And uh, after you moved to Clarendon, uh, they, did they both help you on your farm there then? Or yeah. They helped your farm. Uh -huh. David, do you uh, have any questions? No, but I don't think I knew that uh, Aunt Molly and Uncle Eula uh, live in Clarendon. They're close to you. Yeah. Uh, see, after MRT died, well, they moved in the house with Aunt Cal and kept him. Of course, he just lived a year. That year, and then they moved back to... I guess I, no, they didn't move from Baltimore. They moved. That's the last I, I heard of them in Baltimore. I guess they went to Georgia when they lived Clarence. Mm -hmm. How Aunt Molly died before Uncle Eula, right? Long time before. Yeah. No, no, he died first. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a good thing we're having this little conversation. Yeah, uh, that makes me think, let me say this to Joe before I forget. Joe, uh, did I hear you say y'all might go through Georgia? We might. Okay. If you go through Sylvester, Georgia, Dolores is working at the airport out there, the city airport. You what might town? You might drive by and see her. What town? Sylvester. Sylvester, yeah, I'm sure. Mr. Uh -huh. Now, where, where is that from Atlanta? Well, I think that's about 200 miles, probably would be south of south. Atlanta. Down toward Albany. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, it's right next to Albany. Now, she's the one that uh, was a, a pilot. Really airplane. Yeah. Is she still uh, involved in that? Or? Yeah, she's still uh, got students, and, and then the city just went in there and fixed the airport up and gave her the job to take care of it. Okay. Mm. That's great. I got a letter from her last week to tell me about it. What year did you leave Crocus Bluff to go to Clarendon? Uh, in 1951, December. Is that right? Uh -huh. well, that was a year that we moved, uh, Joanne and I moved from California to Ohio yeah, in 1951. Yeah. David was born in February 52. That's right. You were pregnant. I remember right. that uh, <laughs> you were living with uh, Uncle Cal. No, you weren't. No, we lived no. across the road over there. Yeah. But we went over there visiting, and yeah. you had an outboard motor stuck in a barrel <laughs> of water, and she was there cranking that thing, and she was about ready to have a baby. <laughs> and I was really concerned about that. Yeah. That's great. Or is that in my house still there? No. Is the one that was in the woods still there? No. The one that that uh, uh, floating in the yeah. dead end. Okay, Uncal moved that up close to the house, the other house, but they're all burnt down. Well, that Eason boy burnt, Bill bought that when Uncal left them down there. 
that they burnt now. What about the house uh, back in the woods across the canal, the Inman? Was that Robert Inman that lived back there? Or was that Claude we're talking about? That's what we were talking about. Oh, that house burnt? Mm -hmm. That was a fairly new house, wasn't it? I mean, not built many years yeah. ago. Yeah. I mean, no, wasn't that on August Prang's ground? No. That old man Inman owned that back then. Now, who owns it now, do you think? Eason boy. You know Robert Eason? You've heard yeah, of him. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll be. Well, listen, Ludy, it was nice for you to come over, and it was nice for you to let us get you uh, on record. And I'll tell you, this will be shown around the United States. <laughs> it's time to kiss you goodbye now. No, it's just that uh, we just don't want to do it. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, anything, David, you want to say before we... No, it just seems like uh, everything is just uh, disappearing. Makes me feel like the two Inman houses there. See, there's two more things gone. Yeah. What's going to happen when Russell Mars is not around and... Uh, Edison Keithley's and uh, I don't know the swabs. I, I don't have any idea. They probably they won't be anybody that knows anything about the cemetery or anything else. They'll probably just go to bury the people on top of one another. Is that right? That's too bad. Well, again, Ludy, it was nice that you sat here and visited with us and talked with us. And we'll see you next trip. All right. Okay. Bye. This.